least 28 states that have been fighting the law, including the governor of this one, say that they're not necessarily obligated to implement the law, at least all the details of it. Virginia Governor Bob McDonald. Governor, um, what are you and other governors like-minded saying or planning? I thought if the Supreme Court said this is the deal, uh, this is the law, you have to implement it. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? Well, they didn't say that, Neil. All they said was on a five to four vote that under the tax and spend clause that it was constitutional. They didn't say it was a good idea or a good policy. And so now it goes to the next uh, stage, and that is whether or not uh, we're going to have a new president and a new Senate and whether the law will stand uh, come, uh, come November. Uh, I hope that it will get repealed. Uh, there's going to be a vote July 11th in the United States Congress to uh, advance the repeal of this bill. So well, that's only in the is, House. Uh, that, to be fair, that's in the House, the Republican House. It's going nowhere in the that, Senate. Uh, as things stand now, Governor, it just rolls on. There is the Medicaid portion that could be very onerous to states like yours because you pick up the tab for that, as do, I guess, these other 27 governors who share your anxiety there. Um, but you have to do it, or you're saying, no, you don't. Well, you, if the law goes into effect July of 2014, with regard to the exchange, you either have a state-based exchange or the default is if you do nothing, you have a federal exchange. And, of right. course, at this point, we don't even know what's in that, Neil. And so it's hard for a governor to make a good decision when you sort through those 3,300 pages. You don't have all the information from the federal government is what does the federal exchange look like and whether or not we should have a state exchange that might actually give us more control. So at this point... Uh, we've gotten word even today from HHF that they're backing off some of the deadlines in terms of applying for grants and so forth. So I don't want to make, I don't want to waste the taxpayers' money and accept uh, money, build a state-based exchange, and then find out that Mitt Romney gets elected, which I hope he does, and uh, we start the process of repealing this cumbersome, unfunded mandate that'll cost my state 2.2 billion dollars uh, in the next 10 years by this incredible extension of Medicaid that's already bust in the budget. So I think the prudent thing to do is let's wait a little bit more. Let's do some planning for the options, but let's wait and see what happens. If Mitt Romney gets elected, day one we're going to have waivers and we're going to start repealing it. You know, uh, Governor, uh, hearing the plans of a lot of Republican governors, a prominent Democrat and other uh, low-ranking campaign officials for Barack Obama were saying this is a case of Republicans thumbing their nose at the highest court in the land. What do you say? No, that's completely incorrect. Uh, even Judge Roberts, so Justice Roberts said in his opinion that this helps to resolve the constitutional question, and that is that on a five to four vote that the tax and spend clause of the United States Constitution authorizes the Congress to do that. That doesn't mean it's a good idea, and that doesn't mean that this unpopular law, Neil, this has been unpopular from the time it was passed. It's no more popular today among the American people who see this as a well, major are you, are you disappointed infringement in just, of the are government. You, are you dis disappointed in Justice Roberts? He shocked a lot of people. Look, I think Justice Roberts did what he thought was right under the United States Constitution. He clearly said the Necessary and Proper Clause and the Commerce Clause doesn't authorize this major power grab by the federal government. I think that's positive, but he found that the Tax and Spend Clause... Uh, did. So, look, I'm going to leave that. That's a legal question. But the policy question, Neil, is, is this good for the American people, the people of Virginia? No, it's not. We ought to have more uh, policies that re reflect uh, federalism, that honors the doctor-patient privilege. It doesn't break the bank. This is a bureaucratic, unfunded mandates on citizens in the states. And so now I don't see any harm in waiting the four months and see if we get a new Senate and a new president. If you want to repeal Obamacare, you need to have a new president. And uh, that's what I hope it'll happen. All right. What if you don't get that? What if uh, Mitt Romney loses? What if there is no switch in the Senate? Then you kind of have to realize, well, that, that's that, right? If the law's in effect, you either have to build a state exchange or you've got to default and have the federal government actually have the exchanges for the entire country. I'm a little leery about that, given that the, they can't even explain what the bill does at this point a couple of years later. I'm a little hesitant to turn over this major new bureaucracy to the federal government. Uh, but at this point, with some of the delays in the implementation and delays in application, I think we've got a little time. And uh, my hope is that this president, running on a record of $16 trillion in debt, an 8% unemployment rate for 40 months, and now the biggest tax increase on the American middle class in a long time, that we are going to have a new president, and that means we're not going to have Obamacare. All right, if that happens, we might have a new vice president as well. Word is that you've been vetted, whatever that means. Is that true? Well, Neil, I'm going to let you all speculate <laughs> about that. There's only one person that has a... I feeling you answer a... that. <laughs> only one person matters on that, and it's not me. 
Uh, I tell you what I will do is I'm going to help Mitt Romney win Virginia and help elect a lot more Republican governors since I'm chairman of the organization this year. And that way we'll have CEOs at the state and federal level that understand freedom, free enterprise, liberty, and how to create jobs. That's what counts.